So President Obama landed in Cuba and the head of Cuba, who was there for the Pope, and he was there for other dignitaries that come in, but he wasn't there for the President of the United States. I mean, we are amateur hour, folks. Amateur hour. And honestly, Obama should have turned the plane around and left. Well, it is true, President Obama arrived for his historic visit only to be ignored at the airport by the Castros, a fact Donald Trump deems a snub. President Obama was greeted by other Cuban officials, but not by Raul Castro. The White House claims it was not an insult and noted that heads of state don't often come to the airport to greet visiting leaders in Havana. How about all that? Let's talk about it now as I'm joined on the anchor desk by political analyst Helen Aguirre. She's also the chair of the Board of Trustees of Miami-Dade College and also here the founding mayor of the city of Doral, Florida, Juan Carlos Bermudez. Thanks to you both. And Helen, we'll start with you. Does Donald Trump have a valid point? I think Donald Trump has a valid point. And, you know, this is considering it's a historic trip and that President Obama is trying to put an end to what could conceivably be the last vestige of the Cold War. You would think that he'd have support of Raul Castro in doing it. But Raul Castro, if you listen to everything he's saying, he's the one who really doesn't want the Cold War to end because he continues to make hay with it. You look at what we're doing, you know, the politics of appeasement has never been good politics or good public policy, but that's what the Obama administration is doing. Castro gets more dollars, gets more advantages that really enriches the pockets of the military. And when you look at this, you see that they're the ones who are in charge of the economy. It's very difficult to be able to have democracy grow and flourish when you have a communist government that punishes people who try to just say the truth or disagree that is a political and capital crime in Cuba. JC, let me talk to you. Uh, as a mayor, you're used to negotiations in days past. In this situation, has the United States given up too much and received too little in exchange for opening these relations with Cuba? Well, I think absolutely the, the, the United States has. And speaking as an American, I felt really saddened on my way over here listening to President Obama answer for Raul Castro. The first question asked by the press, which was from a ironically Cuban-American reporter or a reporter whose father was Cuban and to hear the president of this great democracy uh, basically answer uh, justify the response that was going to be followed up because one of the questions was are there political prisoners what is going to happen with political prisoners and I think I'm very saddened as an American today I certainly am saddened as, as, as coming at the age of three uh, the son of and a Cuban exile uh, I am very sad to see that uh, my hope for the United States playing a role in bringing about democracy in Cuba uh, instead of being spurred and helped on by this, the, this exchange may actually go in the other direction. And uh, it is interesting, Helen, that according to a new CBS News poll, most Americans support the president restoring relations with Cuba, but they also want to see our uh, facility at Guantanamo Bay remain open. Do you expect that to be the case, or might we see the president freestyle in Havana and hand Raul that deed? Well, you see the president always overreaching with executive rule and executive order and violating the Constitution, and he may very well just want to do that and hand over Guantanamo. He doesn't want to have anything to do with it. But there are enough Americans who are also understanding that for national security reasons, Guantanamo plays an important role, and the United States should keep it. Just a few hours before President and Obama showed up to Cuba, how does the Raul Castro government respond? They round up 50 dissidents, many of them damas de blanco, ladies in white, who every Sunday go march to church with gladiolas. And, you know, this time they have palms because it was Palm Sunday. And what do they do? They're detained and or arrested. What does this tell you of how serious the Fidel Castro regime looks at this process? And we are seeing that video uh, from yesterday in Havana. There is not the ability to dissent from the communist regime there. Uh, it is worth noting that Republican presidential candidate Ted Cruz, who of course is the son of a Cuban immigrant, blasted President Obama's visit in a recent op-ed, writing that the president's visit legitimizes the corrupt and ignores the oppressed. Now, this visit 
is supposed to bury the hatchet. But JC, where you live with your constituency and really nationwide, will it bring to the surface all the continued concerns and will worse lead to a crackdown on the very dissidents that Helen referred to. Well, I think Helen's correct. Not only the, 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 the 50 dissidents that were arrested on Sunday, but the 250 have been arrested since he got there. The 2,000 plus that have been detained in the first two months of this year. I don't think it'll bring about a change. You know, my opinion, uh, J.D., is a little bit uh, unique in the sense that I believe if the president has chosen a path, which I don't agree with, now, now our role as Americans is to support those who want to see democracy in Cuba. And to do that, we must demand that our president stands up for what this country stands for. You know, he talked about Burma in his speech. I want to see what happened in Burma happen in Cuba. I want to see Aung San Suu Kyi's opposition party, even if she doesn't run, be able to run and win an election. That hasn't happened in Cuba. It's disgraceful that this president is not insisting upon the same for Cuba as he did for Burma. Helen, final word to you. I just have to point out that this afternoon, the president said he had a frank and candid discussion about human rights with Raul Castro. And I'm sure Raul Castro had frank and candid remarks to President Obama that nothing is going to change. And you see that with the political police that's constantly arresting. In Cuba, Cuba harbors U.S. fugitives. There's one woman who has been uh, accused and convicted mm -hmm. of killing a New Jersey state trooper in 1973, being given political asylum in Cuba Bring her back. Let's just begin there. And she has that a radio, would be she has a radio show in Cuba, by the way. Oh, article. she has a radio show. Well, on this television program, sadly, our time is up. JC and Helen, we thank you for your assessment. There is more ahead, so stay tuned.